So you want to buy an investment property. Buying an investment property is incredibly rewarding. Not only is it a way to completely multiply your net worth, supplement your entire retirement income, but even better yet, you get something called mailbox money. Somebody delivers mail to your front door and you look inside and there's money in it. That's not a bad deal at all, right? If you found yourself considering to invest in real estate in the future to enhance your overall portfolio and financial future, today's video is just for you. And we're gonna cover everything from A to Z, all the way from the general ways to invest, including what you could do investing with new construction, the financial rewards and benefits of doing such, whether to self-manage your property or pay a professional, the cons of getting into the investment world as well as being a landlord, some alternatives outside of directly being a landlord that could still get you into the investment game, and finally, just how to get started. When you finish with today's video, you're gonna know absolutely everything you need to know to become a real estate investing tycoon. You're going to have the blueprint for success and you're going to know exactly what it's going to take to get you started. Plus, you're going to want to hang around to the very end because I've got two very special gifts just for you, just for watching this video. So if that all sounds good, let's jump into it. don't have to cover all of the amazing reasons why you should consider getting into real estate investing. You've heard all the stories out there. You've probably even read the books if you're watching this video about all the amazing benefits and the pathway to financial abundance just by getting into the real estate investing game. That's not what today's video is about though. Today's video is all about everything you need to know before you get started. We're gonna cover a few key areas as we go through this video. And the first one that I wanna start with, which I think is really important, is the strategy that you plan to implement and why you're doing this in the first place. Like any major investment, you absolutely should have a strategy. Do you intend to flip the property in a fast rising marketplace? What about maybe holding it long term? Are you thinking of renovating a property in hopes of raising the rent so it achieves better cash flow? For any real true investors out there, you could consider banking the rental income with the aim of buying another property every three to five years. This power of compounding added on top of the leverage of real estate investing can create potentially huge gains over a period of time. Now that you've got your strategy in place, let's talk about the three plus one ways of investing in real estate and the way to really frame your mindset around this. You've got the very popular route, which many people are choosing as today, which is Airbnb the property or making it into a short term rental. You've also got the cash flow alternative and you've got the equity alternative. In different areas of British Columbia, it's easier to achieve different types of investing goals. As an example, if you live in the lower mainland, sometimes generating cash flow initially as an investor can be difficult. And this is largely due to the cost to get into owning a property. However, other areas of BC, it might be a lot more challenging to create equity in a property other than just the cash flow itself coming in from your monthly rental income. Ideally, you do both, but it doesn't always work that way, especially in the beginning. Let's talk about the first one though. Short-term rentals, Airbnb, VRBO, whatever you wanna call it, there's lots of companies out there. This can be incredibly lucrative for a property owner. This video today is not to get into all the short-term rental pros and cons, but just to bring it to your attention. But you just have to be cautious that there are restrictions around short-term rentals and they're popping up more and more frequently all over the province. Things can change in a blink of an eye, just like they did in the city of Vancouver, where short-term rentals are no longer allowed unless it's within your primary residence where you reside. If you're not looking at getting into the short-term rental game, however, cash Cash flow is your second best bet. Cash flow effectively is where your monthly income exceeds the monthly operating costs of your investment property. When accounting for this, you have to budget for certain things. You have to account for things like licenses, insurance, mortgage, principal, and interest payments, property tax, strata fees, utilities if included, and anything else. Cash flow is a great place to live though because that means you're getting extra money each month just for owning the asset. Number three of three plus one is equity growth. And you probably wouldn't be surprised if I told you that in the Fraser Valley real estate market area, which where my real estate team trades, 
Since January of 2013, where the benchmark price was $453,300 for a single family residence. Fast forward to January of 2023, where that same benchmark price for a residence is now worth $942,200 an increase of 216% in 10 years, according to the Home Price Index, Canada's most accurate measurement of real estate price changes available. You could compare this to the S&P 500, where this grew 259% in the last 10 years, albeit it grew at a faster pace. There was no income involved in this. That's right. You're not using other people's money to supplement your investment. Having the tenant carry the expenses and eventually creating cash flow. Plus owning real estate is a lot less volatile than owning stock. Now I had mentioned three plus one ways of investing in real estate. And the plus one is something I wanna caution you a little bit on, but that's investing in new construction. Basically where you put money down on a new construction project and you're not obligated to the pay the remainder due to the developer until the property and the development completes, which could be anywhere from one, two, three, four, maybe even five years into the future. You can get into some of these properties for as little as 10% down. And what the great thing about investing in this way is it allows you to participate in the equity growth of the market, watching the market grow in value while being tied to real estate for a very small down payment amount. Now there's a few cautions I want to throw your way as well. Number one, that is pure speculation that the market is going to continue to increase. You don't necessarily know that's going to happen and while we all believe it will, things can change. The second caution is you need to make sure that you are able to complete on that property. As of the day of filming this video, in the last 15 months, we have experienced a tumultuous real estate environment where prices have had incredible swings both up and down. Depending on when you hit that swing in the market and where the prices were at that time, you could end up being underwater versus what you paid for the property versus what it might be worth in today's market or the market when the development completes. There's also costs associated with selling a new construction property before it completes, which is called assigning a property if you're unfamiliar. But this isn't what today's video is on. We did a really great video on all the reasons we actually stopped recommending to our clients to buy new construction, which is right here. Make sure you check it out because there's some really interesting things in there that you're gonna to wanna to consider if you're thinking about going down that road. Now that we know the ways about investing in real estate and the ways to create profit in real estate, let's talk about the management and whether you should consider self-management or hiring a professional company. Depending on your level of expertise managing your own properties and also the level of headache that you're actually prepared to create for yourself, naturally managing your own property is going to save you some money. You also could consider hiring a professional property management company, which is typically about 8 to 10% of the total monthly rental amount. Many of our clients that are property investors decide to self-manage them as their portfolio remains small. However, as it grows in size, they tend to get the property management companies in place. If you're considering in investing in a strata property like a condominium or a townhome, you might consider doing self-management for at least the first one because the strata takes care of a lot of the features and maintenance of the building generally and the tenant and yourself would really only be responsible for the maintenance of the inside of the unit and collecting the rent. Once you've decided on the management aspect of things, I want to bring up a couple cautions or cons to the whole world of being a property investor because you deserve both sides of the story. One con is restricted rental rates. In British Columbia, the rent is allowable to be increased based on what the government dictates. This can become an enormous problem for a landlord because as prices rise, like similar to what inflation has been doing in 2022, 2023, and likely beyond, costs of utilities, services, strata maintenance, everything is skyrocketing, including including mortgage rates. However, the only allowable rent increase in British Columbia for this year was 2%. 2% obviously not keeping up with the cost of inflation or expenses whatsoever. The next one is how to deal with bad tenants. And it's a reality that they are absolutely out there. Not only is getting a tenant out of a rental unit extremely frustrating, difficult, and costly, it can also result in damage to your rental unit. By regulation, the maximum damage deposit allowed to be taken on a rental is half of the month's rent. You can 
initially charge another half month's rent for a pet damage deposit, but of course not all tenants have pets. Imagining that you're getting $2,000 in rent for your rental unit and there is significant damage created inside that unit, your damage deposit is only $1,000, which would barely cover the cost of replacing just a single carpet in a bedroom, if at all. As long as a tenant is following the rules, there's also only two ways to evict a tenant from a property. The first one is for owner occupancy, meaning you or somebody who's now purchased the unit from you wants to move in. In good faith, you're allowed to ask the tenant to move and you have to give them a two month notice. The second way is through significant renovation, with the renovations being so significant that no one could really live there. And with this is a four month notice to vacate the unit or home. You're really going to want to familiarize yourself with the Residential Tenancy Act, which is available on the BC government's website, linked below this video. Understanding your rights as a landlord, as well as understanding and appreciating the tenant's rights is critically important to a successful relationship. The last con that I will bring up is the financial one. While being an investment property owner can be incredibly lucrative, there is financial aspects that you do want to consider. The biggest of which is when you sell the property, your necessity of paying a capital gain on that sale. In Canada, unlike selling a primary residence, a secondary home or a investment property is taxable at 50% of the value of any capital gains. This means that if you sell an investment property at a higher price than what you paid for it, you'll have to add 50% of the capital gains to your income for that tax year. So we know there's a ton of upside. We know there's some cons as well to getting into the investment game. So maybe there's some alternatives that you could consider instead of becoming a landlord, instead of getting involved with investment properties. One of the alternatives you could consider is investing in mortgages rather than properties. This keeps you tied to the real estate market in many ways, but allows you to not go through the frustrations of becoming a landlord. There's lots of investment opportunities in financial tech companies related to real estate, or you could look at going into a pooled fund where a group of people either privately or through a company invests in real estate. And somewhat similar to this, there is also real estate investment trusts or REITs. REITs are securities that trade on stock markets that are designed to hold and manage a basket of properties and pass on the income through distributions to its investors. Kind of similar to corporate dividends in a way. Maybe some of these alternatives are not what you're interested in though. Maybe you want to get completely into the investive game and you are sold on moving forward. So what does it take to get started? First of all, you might meet with your financial planner or at least discuss it with them. However, be cautious because a financial planner doesn't usually benefit from you buying an investment property because they don't make any income off that. However, as long as you've got one that you trust and is gonna give you good advice, then great. But you might wanna consider chatting with them. The next one that you're gonna to wanna to talk to is your accountant because you're gonna to wanna to understand everything you need to know financially. It is an investment at the end of the day and you need to know the numbers inside and out. You're gonna to wanna to consider things like the write-offs that you get as an investment property owner and you can write off a ton of stuff. This list includes but is not limited to improvements to the property, maintenance of the property, Financing expenses, meaning you can deduct mortgage interest payments to lower your taxable income. Management of the property and whatever else might come up. Financially, to buy an investment property in Canada, you need to have a minimum of 20% down payment in relation to the purchase price of the property. Not only that, but you must have the ability to qualify to borrow the money in the first place. So you're gonna want to source out a mortgage professional who's got a good history of helping people with investment properties and figuring out their finances. The nice thing about requiring 20% down, however, is you get to skip the mortgage insurance costs with either CMHC, Sagan, which was formerly Genworth, or any of the other ones out there, saving you a little bit of money when it comes time to purchase. Once you've got your mortgage all set up with a mortgage professional you can trust, it's time to find a great realtor who specializes in the area that you're considering investing in. They're going to want to know what's going on with future growth and development of that community. You're also going to want somebody that understands the Residential Tenancy Act inside out because it's important and there's a lot of rules. But not only that, they're also going to have to understand cash flow opportunities for rental properties. If you're interested in learning all about how to qualify a real estate professional for exactly this, make sure you check out this video here where we go all over it. And there you go. That is all the things that you really need to consider when you're getting involved with a investment property. 
I told you to hang around to the end of this video as well because I've got two special gifts to make available to you just for getting through this video. Head to the link in the description area of this video and fill out the form. And once you do, we'll send you our cash flow calculator as well as make sure you're on our waiting list to get our upcoming ebook on how to buy an investment property in British Columbia. So there you go. Now you're an expert or at least you're getting a little bit closer to being one in investing in an investment property in British Columbia. I'm curious what you think. Did I miss anything that was worthy of attention in this video? Is investing in a property a great idea anymore? If you're someone that is watching this video and you need a great introduction to an incredible mortgage professional, let us know in the comments below or email us. Or additionally, if you're someone that lives in a community outside of the areas that myself and my real estate team serve, which is Surrey and the surrounding municipalities, let us know by sending us an email and we'll get you connected with an amazing real estate professional anywhere in British Columbia. If you are someone that is interested in getting into investing in the areas that we do serve, you can use the link below to book a time to speak directly with me in my calendar and we'll make sure you get the information that you need to be successful. Now that I know that you have just learned a ton about getting into real estate investing, I'm going to wish you luck out there in getting into your first investment property. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more incredible videos on everything to do with real estate in Surrey, BC and generally, and we will definitely look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.